Hey guys, Jeff Nelson here. How you doing today? I thought I would make a video about vitamin D because there's a lot of different information floating around in the vegan world and in the world in general. And um, how this kind of came about is my daughters wrote a book called The Clear Skin Diet. They had really bad acne about four years ago and couldn't find any way to get rid of it through dermatology and all that. And uh, came across information about acne-free cultures in South America and the South Pacific and Japan and Africa and saw that they had similarities in their diet. They changed their diet to make it like that. They got rid of their acne. They cleared it up. They did a small pilot study with about 130 people in it. And uh, they, those people agreed to go on the diet. Most of them cleared their acne too. And all of this has been documented in their book. So we have an online Facebook support group where people meet to share recipes and advice and skincare information and so on. And in that, some of the people that are doing the program have said, oh, my parents are concerned that I'm not getting enough of this or that. They're telling me I have to take supplements. And one of the supplements that's come up is vitamin D for somebody living in the northern climate. And, uh, you know, my own feelings, I don't take vitamin D and from everything I've read, you don't want to take it. It's just not necessary unless you fit into a very small uh, class of people with specific problems. And uh, so they said, no, 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 you know, you can you can extend your life. You'll live longer if you take vitamin D. Dr. Greger has videos on this. I know Dr. Greger is very busy doing lots of videos and articles. He's a prolific guy out to help the vegan community. So I wanted to take some time to try and help him and encourage him to have his recommendations up to date. So I went over to nutritionfacts.org and I did a search on vitamin D and you can see a number of different things come up and uh, one of the first ones is should vitamin D supplements be taken to prevent falls in the elderly? And Dr. Greger here says there's been about a dozen randomized controlled trials, vitamin D supplements versus sugar pills, put all the studies together and older men and women do get significant protection from falls with vitamin D. And he notes that leading the conservative USPTF, the Preventative Service Task Force, and the American Geriatric Society to recommend vitamin D supplementation for those high at risk for falls. Now, actually, this is based on old research. When we go to the task force website, we can see down here that they did actually, at one point, recommend that adults over 65 with increased fall risk, that they did recommend vitamin D supplementation. But you can see up here, it says archived. It says this version of this topic is currently archived and inactive. It should be used for historical purposes only. So this is what Dr. Greger is pointing to, but it's out of date and it no longer applies. When we look at their recommendations today, this is from April, 2018. Down here in the bottom, it says adults 65 years or older the USPTF rec recommends against vitamin D supplementation to prevent falls. And this D next to it means that there is moderate or high certainty that the service, in this case, giving vitamin D pills, has no net benefit or that the har harms outweigh the benefits. As you can see up here, exercise interventions to prevent falls in community dwelling adults 65 years or older who are at increased risk for falls. So they do not recommend it. It was correct maybe when he made this video, but this video is out of date. Um, vitamin D for falls, no, we don't, that's not recommended anymore. He's got a video about do vitamin D supplements help with diabetes, weight loss, and blood pressure, and he basically says no, vitamin D pills do not help with that, that's what the research shows. So about the only thing that I could find here that's kind of a, a reason that you might consider taking vitamin D is this video here, Will you live longer if you take vitamin D supplements? And you can see Dr. Greger starts out by saying that basically vitamin D pills really don't offer much benefit. That he says when researchers put supplements to the test, the purported links often didn't pan out. And he goes on to say that it may be that vitamin D is just like a marker, that vitamin D isn't the cause of good health or bad health, but that it's like if you have a cold and you've got a runny nose, if you take a pill that stops your nose from running, you're still sick, you still have a cold. In the same way, if you have a low vitamin D number and you take a pill and you raise that vitamin D number, it may have nothing to do, I think it probably has nothing to do with any risk just by arbitrarily raising that number. The number was low for a reason, and if you're not really addressing that reason, just changing the number is meaningless. And I think this is what the research in vitamin D shows and what most people believe it shows. So let's continue down. Dr. Gregory says, while the majority of observational studies may show a link 
where you just measure vitamin D levels and disease rates, in only a handful of conditions have interventional studies proven vitamin D to be effective, where you give people vitamin D supplements or placebos and then see what happens. But one of those conditions for which vitamin D supplements appear to genuinely work is helping prevent mortality. Now, wait a sec, that is, that's really big. The idea that you can take a pill and you're gonna live longer if you take a vitamin D pill. That's what he's saying. He goes on, 56 randomized clinical trials involving nearly 100,000 people between the ages of 18 and 107, mostly women, randomized to four years of vitamin D supplements or sugar pills. Put all the studies together and those given vitamin D supplements live longer, also specifically lowering the risk of dying from cancer. So that's, that's huge. There's a study with 100,000 people in it and it shows that you're gonna live longer if you take vitamin D versus a sugar pill. Well, let's look at that study and let's see just exactly what that study says. Okay, here's a study that Dr. Gregory is referring to when he says that you can extend your life with vitamin D. It's a study that was done, uh, published in early 2014. The main points are that in truth, this is an extremely preliminary study. Um, the study re researchers say in the study, do not use this study to tell people to take vitamin D in order to live longer. Um, I'm going to I'm going to read you that, but they say it explicitly multiple times. Don't use this study to tell people to take vitamin D pills to live longer. So, I mean, that's that's relevant because that's exactly how the study is being used on nutrition facts. OK, so you can see it says accordingly, 56 randomized trials with 95,000 participants provided usable data on mortality. The age of the pot participants was from 18 to 107, but most trials included women who were older than 70 years old. The mean proportion of women was 77%. It says vitamin D decreased mortality in all 56 trials analyzed together. They also noted that more than 8% of participants in these studies dropped out. Okay, so you have a group of old, mostly women, taking vitamin D for four years and 12.5% of them dies. And then you have another group of mostly old women who are not taking, I mean, they might be taking a placebo or taking nothing and 12.7%, a small percentage of them uh, more die. And the researchers are saying, well, maybe it's the vitamin D. One of the very first problems they acknowledge is that, well, almost 8,000 people dropped out of these studies that we're looking at, and we don't know what happened to them. Some of them died, were the people who died taking vitamin D or not taking vitamin D, because a very small number uh, change in that could totally change the outcome of the study. All of these people having dropped out and having no data on them is a huge problem, the authors are saying. So they're talking continuously about the possible errors. They're talking about selective reporting because they didn't have any data on the cause of death. They don't know if any of the people in the placebo group, let's say, had heart disease. In fact, they start with an assumption, they say, that everybody in this study was healthy at the beginning of the study, including all these people living in convalescent hospitals. So they just assume, oh, everyone's healthy. And if someone dies sooner, it must be because of the vitamin D. And if someone lives longer, it must be because of the vitamin D. So they, they recognize that this is a huge limitation to this study. Now, if we scroll down here to where it says discussion summary of main results, I'm just gonna read. Our systematic review contains a number of important findings. We found evidence suggesting that vitamin D3 may significantly benefit survival of elderly ambulatory participants living in institutional care who are likely to be vitamin D deficient with significant risk of falls and fractures when we disregard the risks of attrition bias and outcome reporting bias. However, if these bias risks are considered, we do not yet know whether vitamin D3 affects mortality. So consider this is a summary of their main results and it is that elderly women living in convalescent hospitals might live a little longer if they take a vitamin D pill, but only if we disregard and ignore all the problems, all the questions, all the missing data, that's like a major red flag. So, th so that means, you know, they're not really that confident uh, in their finding in this review. And then down here they repeat, although more than half of the trials were considered of low risk of bias, our analysis revealed that outcome reporting on more than 8% of participants was lacking. This number is too high when mortality is about 12 to 13% in the placebo, 
or no intervention group. Accordingly, our best worst case and our worst best case analysis revealed that our results were compatible with both a very large beneficial effect and a very large detrimental effect of vitamin D3 on mortality. Although these extreme sensitivity analyses are unlikely, they reveal how few unaccounted for patients should have died to substantially change our findings of modest benefit into nil effect or maybe even harm. Therefore, we warn against uncritical application of our finding. They're qualifying this whole process, this whole meta-analysis that they've done to say, look, there's just too much we don't know. There's too much, it would only take a few people dying in this other group where we have no idea to completely change our finding and have a finding that vitamin D you know, will kill you sooner. That's what they're saying. And so they are warning against uncritical application of our findings. To you know, look at this study and then to uh, suggest to people after you tell them about this study that this means you should go on vitamin D to extend you know, your life is that an uncritical application of their findings? I would say it is. I mean, that's what Dr. Greger has done here. In his video, he talks about that it's sort of a done deal, that uh, now we know you're gonna live longer with vitamin D, so for those of us who want all the help they can get, the next question becomes, okay, how much vitamin D should we take? The question I'll address next. So he's going right from this study, which supposedly case closed, is gonna extend your life, into now how much vitamin D do you need to take? Further down, there's a section called quality of the evidence. Our best worst case and worst best case scenario analysis reveal much more extreme confidence limits compared with our complete case scenario analysis, and they convey a message of a noticeable degree of uncertainty regarding our results. So they do a complete case scenario where they really try to analyze, and it shows a noticeable degree of uncertainty regarding what this review is saying. The observa this observation calls for more comprehensive meta-analysis of individual participant data, plus further large randomized clinical trials. But they note that, but the distribution of dead participants among the lost to follow-up participants may indeed be different from the distribution of dead participants among participants actually followed through the whole observation period, making the uncertainty analysis themselves uncertain. So they can't even run the kind of analysis of to analyze how uncertain these uh, the quality of this is because there's just way too much missing data. Here under cancer, in their conclusions, they say vitamin D seems to decrease cancer mortality. However, data were sparse and selective outcome reporting bias is likely. Although our present data are encouraging, we need more trials to exclude the risks of systemic errors and risks of random errors. So selective reporting bias, that means Mainly you suppress information that the researchers, these researchers don't see. So we don't know, again, what there could be more information about the health of some of the people in the vitamin D group, the health of some of the people in the, um, the, the placebo groups. That information wasn't collected about their health because this wasn't, none of those studies was about mortality. Then they say, in conclusion, we see a potentially positive effect of vitamin D3 on mortality, but we caution against thinking that now we know what to do in clinical practice because of the following. Our collection of trials showed a large dropout rate, which could seriously influence our results. The worst best case scenario analysis does not exclude a risk of increased mortality associated with vitamin D. So the study authors are very careful to tell the readers how they should and should not uh, interpret these re results. And under what's called author's conclusions, they have a section that says implications for practice. We found some evidence that vitamin D3 may decrease all-cause mortality and cancer mortality in predominantly old ladies living independently or in institutional care. They talk then about kidney stones and too much calcium, some of the, the risks. However, because of risks of attrition bias, of outcome reporting bias, and other biases, we cannot yet recommend or refute the use of vitamin D for preventing all-cause mortality or cancer mortality. So there they are saying in the implications for practice, like whether people should be taking vitamin D or not, that, hey, we can't say anything. We can't say it'll extend your life. We can't say it'll shorten your life. We just don't have the data. We can't conclude with this study that there's any advantage to taking vitamin D because it could be just the opposite. So, you know, taking a study like this and then using it to say everyone should take vitamin D, 
to me, is sort of classic cherry picking. It's going in and taking out parts of the study that sound good, that make vitamin D3 sound good, and then ignoring and disregarding all of the warnings and all of the, wait, 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 this is too preliminary, we could be wrong. Now, the only other video that got into specifically to cancer or mortality that I found on, on Nutrition Facts is this one. Do vitamin D supplements reduce the risk of dying from cancer? So at the end of this video, Dr. Greg says, we now have a few randomized controlled trials and vitamin D supplements do indeed appear to reduce the risk of dying from cancer. And to back that up, Dr. Greger points to this study, vitamin D supplements and cancer in incidence and mortality, a meta-analysis. Now these researchers looked at some studies and they concluded that there's a 12% mortality advantage with vitamin D pills and that people with cancer, 12% of them are going to live who would otherwise die except that they're taking vitamin D pills. Now understand that this is not a study where they gave people uh, vitamin D and tracked their cancer and watched them to see if there was a benefit. Again, this is a study that just looked at some bone fracture things, collected what information was available, and then made a bunch of inferences, made a bunch of guesses, specula speculations, and estimated that maybe there was a 12% benefit. Uh, there is no credible evidence of harmful effects of vitamin D in this range, so what do you got to lose? That's sort of like, maybe you're gonna have a 12% reduction. It won't reduce cancer, but it might reduce mortality from cancer is basically what they're saying. Now this study, this meta-analysis was criticized when it was published in 2014. And this comment was published shortly after the, the meta-analysis. And Dr. Greger even put this up briefly on his video and quoted this part, the findings of this study will have a profound influence on the future of cancer treatment. What he didn't then quote is the next line, which is nevertheless, we also found some worthwhile issues worth being discussed. And then they go through five separate sort of complaints they have about this study and the weakness of this study and how they didn't follow the handbook uh, guidelines and recommendations to test for bias, to test for missing information, to test for errors. And that basically they did a very sloppy job with this study. And the authors of the study were given a chance to reply about the criticisms and they, they replied basically by saying, well, we didn't have room to do all that extra work. And in the end here, they say meta-analysis is a process of putting together scattered pieces of puzzles available to infer about the complete picture. So basically, these authors are saying, you know, we're taking scattered pieces of a puzzle. We are making inferences and guesses and trying to understand. We're doing the best we can. We, you know, have limitations. So this just brings up another subject, which is these meta-analysis and really how valuable are they? Here is an article by Neil Bernard, MD, called The Misuse of Meta-Analysis in Nutrition Research, talking about how you can basically, you know, the meat industry can get any result they want in the way that they set up and evaluate and make inferences. And in fact, Dr. Greger himself has written about this very subject. Here's an article about how to design saturated fat studies to hide the truth, and he talks about meta-analysis and their weaknesses. Seriously misleading results can come out of these meta-analysis. So this cancer study, if it were a study done by the meat industry to show that you know meat doesn't cause cancer, we would kind of laugh it off. And that's sort of how I view this one isolated study. Now we already know that the conservative US Preventive Services Task Force, this is an organization which Dr. Greger himself cites and endorses, we know that they specifically recommend against anyone taking vitamin D to prevent falls or for bone health. The only approach to improve bone health that they approve is exercise. Now they have also developed a position on vitamin D as regards cancer. And currently the USPTSTF says that evidence is insufficient for recommending single nutrient supplements to prevent cancer. And here they talk specifically about vitamin D pills and they say, the simplest way to interpret the vitamin D and calcium results is that these vitamins have no effect on CVD or cancer, CVD being heart disease. A systematic review by Wang and colleagues came to a similar conclusion. In fact, vitamin D pills are so worthless that the USPTS FF doesn't even promote testing for vitamin D levels at all. You don't need to know what your vitamin D level is, according to them, because raising that number using a pill has absolutely no benefit. Let's look at the recommendations of another leading expert on cancer. That's the American Institute for Cancer Research, or AICR. This is one of the best resources for cancer that's out there. They actually uh, helped pay for the China study and uh, endorse uh, Dr. Campbell's work, and uh, they recommend a plant-based diet. Vitamin D calcium supplements do not lower cancer risk, and they report on a new trial, and this is in 2017, 
four years after the one that Dr. Greger had written about. They say in a 2018 review on cancer that there's no evidence that vitamin D pills will lower cancer risk. And besides that, there's been a lot of research published about vitamin D since then in major journals, and all of it basically poo-poos this stuff that uh, Dr. Greger here is offering to support his recommendations for vitamin D. So for example, The Lancet, which is an English journal, here they say many of these studies show a strong association between low vitamin D concentrations and disease. However, the results of myriad recent small randomized controlled trials are almost unanimous in concluding that vitamin D supplements provide protection from few, if any, of these outcomes. I've seen a lot of kind of misleading stuff, scaremongering that, oh, vitamin D has to be high to get this or that, but no evidence showing that taking a vitamin D pill is gonna change anything any more than um, you know, stopping your nose from running means you no longer have a cold. I'm inviting people to, in the comments below, submit links to any studies or names of any studies that you think uh, show why people should be taking any, any vitamin D. Send me the study. If there's any you know, credible studies or credible looking studies, I'll make another video and look at those studies. But at this point, I'm with all of the many uh, scientific advisory boards and with doc people like Dr. McDougall who've looked at it that say, nonsense. Dr. McDougall had a newsletter in 2015, which again was after the mortality study that Dr. Greger points out. Dr. McDougall says, there is no level of vitamin D discovered by a blood test that would cause me as a medical doctor to prescribe vitamin D supplements to one of my patients. This is a really good article on the state of knowledge and science and vitamin D. I'm gonna put a link to this and I encourage people if you're on the fence or you're confused or you don't know to read this because it's got a lot of great information in it. To me, the, the right approach to medicine is the conservative approach because we've seen too many um, vitamins, too many nutrients that supposedly benefit you and people jump on the bandwagon only to find that they later increase your cancer risk or they don't do what effect you get from the food or the lifestyle. So I'll be looking at the comments down below and answering and looking further and if someone does come up with, you know, some convincing research, it's just not there. But I'll, I'll be looking and happy to talk about it. I know that Nutrition Facts has a motto, you know, we evaluate studies so you don't have to, but I did evaluate them myself anyhow. And I'd love to know, you know, maybe it's time for a new uh, vitamin D video on Nutrition Facts and with the latest and most current uh, known research. So I'm looking forward to seeing that as well.